Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding Mahalanobis distance using SPSS. In counseling research, we use Mahalanobis distances to detect multivariate outliers. So if you take a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view, I have uh, depression, a depression variable, an anxiety variable, and a motivation variable. And the combinations of these scores are what is of interest to us, meaning are these combinations representative of an outlier or not? So that's what I mean when I refer to multivariate outliers. In this case, there's three separate variables. And for these variables, we'll compute one variable, and I'll call it MD for Mahalanobis distance, and we're going to evaluate that value and determine if any of these records, of these 10 records, represent multivariate outliers. So before explaining uh, that process, I want to review how the probability method and the critical value method are actually the same approach to evaluating the Mahalanobis distances, just different computations. So you may be familiar with the critical value table that's available for Mahalanobis distances, and they often run from one to tens in terms of degrees of freedom. You can see I have a variable here, degrees of freedom, and I have one, two, all the way through 10. And then I have the probability that I want to calculate the critical value for. And it's always going to be the same. We evaluate at 0 0.001. So that's why this is constant through this variable probability. So moving from probability to the critical value, I'm going to go to transform, compute variable. And I'm just going to name this target variable critical value. So it matches the variable I have in the data editor already. To start this numeric expression, I'm going to move over to the function group, and I'm going to look for inverse df. I'm going to select that, and you can see a number of functions and special variables appear down here in this list box in the bottom right, and I want idf.chi-square. I'm going to double-click that. And you can see this accepts two arguments. One is the probability, which of course we have here, and the other is the degrees of freedom, which we also have. So for probability, the value is going to be 1 minus the probability value here. So I'm going to drag that over. So 1 minus the probability. And then for degrees of freedom, it's going to be df for degrees of freedom. I'm going to move that over. And that's the numeric expression that will create the critical value. I'll click OK. And because I already have a variable named critical value, it's going to ask me if I want to change the existing variable, which I do. So I'll hit OK. And then you can see it's produced the critical values corresponding to these degrees of freedom. So if I were to evaluate five variables at the same time, the critical value would be 20.52. So what if I want to move back from critical value to the probability of 0.001? I'll go to Transform, Compute Variable, and I'm going to replace the critical value with the probability 2 variable that matches the one I have here. I'm going to delete the numeric expression already in here. And the new num numeric expression is going to start with 1 minus. Then I'm going to go over to CDF and non-central CDF, select that, move down to CDF.chi-square. And you can see, when I double-click this, uh, you can see that it takes two arguments, the quant and the degrees of freedom. So for quant, that's going to be, in this case, the critical value. It's going to be the actual Mahalanobis distance we want to determine the probability for. So I'm going to take critical value and move that over. And then for degrees of freedom, that's going to be the degrees of freedom variable, the 1 through 10. 
So this is the numeric expression. I'll click OK. And again, I'll overwrite the existing variable. And all these probabilities for probability 2 should be 0, 0, or 0.001, and they are. So I've shown you how to move from the probability to the critical value, and then from the critical value back to the probability using transform and compute variable. So now to show you how to evaluate for multivariate normality using Mahalanobis distance, I'm going to use these three variables and calculate the Mahalanobis distance in a new variable, as a new variable. So that's going to be analyze, and then regression, and linear. So we want the linear regression dialog, even though uh, it's not our intent to calculate a linear regression. We're just interested in the Mahalanobis distance. I'm going to select the three variables of interest here, which would be depression, I'm going to hold down control, anxiety, and motivation, and move them over to the independent list box. And then we're going to need to specify a dependent in order for this to work, even though we're not interested in the linear regression. We're only interested in the Mahalanobis distance. It doesn't matter what we select as a dependent. It's not going to change the result. And I'll demonstrate this. So outcome, which is really unrelated to computing the Mahalanobis distance, I'm going to move that variable over. And then under save, so right here under save, uh, we want to select Mahalanobis under distances. And that's all we want to select, nothing else. Then continue, and then OK. And it's going to perform the, the linear regression. But when I come back to the data view, you can see it's produced the Mahalanobis distance for these three variables, depression, anxiety, and motivation. And if I were to go back in to analyze, and go back to regression and linear, and change outcome to, say, a variable that has uh, really even less to do with what we're studying, uh, like degrees of freedom, which is just to demonstrate how to compute the critical values. We'll put degrees of freedom in there and click OK and then move back to the data view. You see it's the same values. It does not matter what the dependent variable is uh, when computing Mahalanobis distance. We just have to provide one so that we can execute the linear regression to get the Mahalanobis distance. So I'm going to delete the second one I just generated by right-clicking and clicking Clear. So as you can see from these Mahalanobis distances, none of these values represent, none of these combinations represent uh, an outlier, right? Because it would be three dependent variables. So we go here to uh, degrees of freedom, three, and the critical value would be 16.27, and the highest value here is 5.6. And of course, we can use the probability method as well. And it's, again, based on the same logic. So I'll go to Transform, Compute Variable. And you can see that probability 2 is loaded from the last time I used the Compute Variable dialog. And that was to convert the critical value to the probability. So we can use the same numeric expression I'll just change uh, probability to probability underscore md. And then for the degrees of freedom, I'm going to change that to 3 because we have three variables. And then instead of the critical value, I'm just going to use the mah underscore 1, which is the Mahalanobis distance for depression, anxiety, and motivation. Then I'll click OK. It's going to create a new variable named probability MD. And I'm going to go to variable view and adjust this so it displays more digits to the right of the decimal. And you can see that here, not, none of these probabilities is even close to the 0 0.001. All of them are well above the 0 0.001 level. I want to provide you an example where you could see uh, an outlier appear, but with 10 records, it's really 
difficult to get a Mahalanobis distance that would come up as greater than the critical value because 10 records really aren't enough. So I'm going to paste in new values for these four variables, depression, anxiety, motivation, outcome. Of course, only depression, anxiety, and motivation are used in the computation of the Mahalanobis distance. I'm going to paste those in. I'm going to clear these variables. I'm going to go back to analyze, regression, linear. Now in this situation, the dependent variable does matter because if I stick with degrees of freedom here, there's only 10 records and the number of records needs to match. So I'm going to switch this out with the dependent variable outcome. As long as the dependent variable use here has the same number of records, it will not change the result of the Mahalanobis distance, but, but a different number of records would affect the Mahalanobis distance. I'm going to click OK. We see now we have, again, MAH1, but a few of these values do exceed the critical value of 16.27. Actually, two exceed it, 20.25 and 18.54. So these combinations of these three variables represent multivariate outliers. And then again, to use the probability method, I'll go to transform, compute variable. The probability MD is already loaded in. Uh, nothing here will change. I have the correct uh, quant variable, MAH underscore one, and three degrees of freedom. So I'll click OK. And we would expect for the first two values that the probability will be below 0 0.001. So I'm going to go to variable view and adjust this again so that six digits appear to the right of the decimal. Go back to data view and we can see here that in fact the probability for the first Mahalanobis distance and the probability for the second are both less than 0 0.001. The first one is 0 0.00015 and the second point zero 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 three three nine. But then looking at the third record here, I have point zero zero four, which is greater than point zero zero one. So only the first two Mahalanobis distance values would indicate that we had multivariate outliers. I hope you found this video on understanding Mahalanobis distance and SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.